Hello viewers, welcome to Amazing Foundation Ministries International Parent Corner. Tonight, I would, my topic really is to let you know that you should not give up yet. Don't give up just yet because help is on the way. So how have you been today? Did everything go well? Any news? Good? Bad? Any issue in your workplace? Any issue relating to your family, to your family members, anything relating to your health, anything relating to finances, unemployment. I just want to encourage you, don't give up just yet. Don't give up just yet. There will be a lot going on. Or there might have been a lot that is going on around you. And you'll be wondering... Where is this God? What is going on? Why are things this way with me? I just want to encourage you and to remind you that God is still God. He's still on the throne. He will never fail. He will never fail you. You've tried your best. You've done all that you could. All that you feel you could. I just want to let you know, don't give up. You're preaching the gospel. You're praying for people, you're helping out, and you're still wondering, where is that help? I just want to remind you, your help will come soon from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Is that news unpleasant? Does it make you feel bad? Is there bereavement in the family? Your God will come and save you. Your God will will come and support you. Your God will come and strengthen you. Don't give up just yet. Whatever the situation, don't give up just yet. You know, there are times when it feels like everything should just end. I've been through situations like that. You just, you just want to wake up in the morning and you just want to hear something different. You just want it to feel like, oh, Everything just went like a, like um, it just, it, you know, everything just went like, like a wind. A wind passed by and everything just went and you have a new life. Yes, I've been, in, I've been there before. And I'm reminding you again, your God will come and save you. Your God, my God, will come and deliver you. Don't give up. Don't give up. It's a trial time. It will soon be over. Don't give up just yet. I don't know why the message is coming. But it could be talking to me. It could be talking to you. Whatever the situation is, don't give up. I'm going to give you some, some hints from what I've discovered um, over the years. Whenever you're going through any situation... The first thing is worship God like never before. The Bible says in Psalm 103, verse 2, it says, Praise the Lord. It says, Forget not all his benefits. Remember all, all that he has done for you in the past. Remember situations that have been so tough, this toughest situation in your life, that you feel, ah, if God did not come true, what could have happened to me? Remember those situations. Tell it back to him. Tell it back to yourself. I was telling my children this morning, I was saying, I soliloquize a lot. You know, especially when I'm, when I'm seated and I'm thinking about God. I just think of all sorts of things and I just begin to worship. And I just begin to, to use my words to remind him of all that he has done. It doesn't mean I'm mad. I just like to speak to God. I, I, because I just feel that God is not a statute. So, I, 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 it's not his statue. So, I need to speak to him. And you know, there are times when you communicate in your spirit. And there are times when you need to raise your voice. It's just like children. When children really want to um, read, they read. They may read quietly. They may read loud. But when there's a disturbance, you will see them reading loud. And even adults do it as well. We repeat things over and over again. That is a sign that there's disturbance in that um, area, in that location. 
at the moment that is affecting us. That's why we are reading loud. So I have times like that when I just speak out loud. You know, enough of this being scared to talk to my God. I don't want to. So that is why I'm encouraging you today. Talk so much about what he's done for you. Those tough situations that he has helped you to overcome when you looked around you and, uh, and you've thought there's obviously no way out. There is no way this is going to be sorted. And suddenly it came on board and it sorted things out for you. He's still faithful. Remember those times? Tell it out to him over and over again. Your friend call, make sure that message is an opportunity to preach the gospel. Tell it to him. The Bible says that tell of all his wonders. Those are his wonders. Tell of all, the, all his wonders. And you will notice something. You begin to have confidence for a start. Confidence beyond your understanding. You begin to have confidence. The, the cloud will begin to clear up as you begin to tell of his wonders. So tell of his wonders in your own corner. Tell of his wonders to your friends. Evangelize. Preach to them. Talk to them about the faithfulness of God. And you will begin to notice a difference. Another thing is this. Stay positive. Yeah, that's it. Stay positive. It doesn't matter. There are many times when the enemy will just throw all sorts of things at you. You know, you can imagine you're already down and then so your husband comes home or your children or family members or aunties, uncles, anyone, even your workplace, your workplace colleagues. And then instead of, instead of you hearing something positive, you begin to hear something negative. You know, you might just run to the toilet and cry and just wonder why is everything upside down. Don't worry. Stay positive. Stay positive. If you don't know what to do, tell God to give you a Bible verse to stay positive. It will soon be over. It's just a matter of time. God is still at work. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. You and your family. He will not leave you in that situation only if you stay positive. You give him thanks. You remember what he's done for you in the past. And you tell it to him. Tell it to him. He's still able. He's still listening. Sometimes it might be that he's so far away. I don't know. I remember a story when, when we were young. It, it talks about, um, it's a song actually. It says, Foot sprints in the sun. He, met, he held me in his arm. He gave me strength to face the coming day. Sometimes I fell alone, felt alone. I was never on my own. Someday I'll understand. And footprints in the sun. It's only when the situation turns around, then you will understand that there's a footprint in the sun. And it, 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 I love that song so much. But what I remember about it is that, is that I remember one day when walking through life, sand he said so many things went on him he said but one thing he always remember was there was a footprint in the sand when he was about to sink it was then that the lord carried him so i'm telling you parents friends relatives moms dads aunties uncles there's a footprint in the sand trust in him that is god that is your savior that is your i am that i am trust in him don't give up just yet don't give up just yet. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Now, the third thing is this. Your confession are powerful. Your confession, they are very powerful. Now, you can use confession. I believe we, we all know what confession is about. It's when you repeat over and over again, particular statement, positive statement. You, you, you repeat it over and over again. You claim it. That is your confession. They are powerful. So, some people, some negative words that come out of their mouth, and they, they, they really, really um, hold on to that, to that. If you say it's finished, if you, did, if you say there's no way out, there's no way out. 
But if you say there is a way out, there is a way out. If you say that everything is upside down, it will be upside down. You know? Because the Bible says that with our mouth, we will confess. So, it's important that you should confess something positive in, your, in that situation, even if it looks gloomy. Even if it looks like there is no way out anymore. Confess positive. Remind yourself that God is still faithful. So, you can be saying, let's say it's all about job. You can say, because my God lives, I have, I, I have job already. Because he told me that those who don't work shouldn't eat. Well, I have work. And therefore, I'm going to be satisfied. Do you have a sick child? Tell God, this child is not sick. Confess it. This child is not sick. This child is well. Because I have a father who never fails me. The words of your mouth are powerful. If you're short of words for confession, I'll teach you another secret. Go straight into the Bible. And when you get into the Bible, let's say you are talking about healing. Look for Bible verses about healing and just personalize it and just begin to say, He's near that justifies me. Who can condemn me? No one, of course. He is the Lord that healed me. He has sent His word already and He has healed my diseases. So just confess, confess, confess. The Bible says that if you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved, you and your household. Not just even you, you and your household. So when you begin to use the word of God, do you know that you are actually confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord? You don't have to just say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. When you hold on to the word of God and use it over and over again, then you are actually confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord. Even myself, as I'm talking to you, I just sometimes I just feel like the Bible verses should be up there around my wall, everywhere in my house, so that I would, in just in case of anything, I wouldn't really, 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 really need to be looking around. I just want to see there and just go and read, because the words are powerful. The Bible even says that the word became flesh and dwell among us. The word of God actually becomes flesh for real. It dwells inside you. You see, I remember when I was young, I used to be afraid for little things. And then the Lord dropped a Bible verse in my, the Holy Spirit dropped a Bible verse in my heart. Sometimes, sometimes I go after that. That when I am afraid, I will trust in you. And when it is night time, you know as children now, when it's night time, they don't want the door to be locked, they don't want windows to be shut, they just want to come and wrap themselves around about you. And I began to say that, that when I am afraid, I will trust in you. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. When I am afraid, do you know, as time went on, when I was young, that fear began to disappear. And that helped me to like grow up. So, you know, obviously when you, you become an adult or you become a teenager, or you get to that 21 or 25, and you're wondering... You can't even stay in the room. You are looking for opportunity to go and meet your friends because you're kind of scared. Just use your Bible verses. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. And you will see, God will come forth. He will come. He will shine forth. You know, out of darkness. Yeah? God shines. He shines. He shines forth into that situation. So I'm imploring you tonight, friends, relatives, pastors, wives, husbands, servants of God's uh, wives, ministers, don't give up just yet. Don't give up just yet. God is still on the throne. He can help us. Let's all hold on to him. Let us hold on. Let us just stay calm. Let us just, you know, worship. Remember what he's done for us. I say it over and over again. But, those are the three. But I really have to tell you, there's one thing that I really want us to look into. Every time I sleep and wake up, and I'm about to sleep, I'm always scared of this one thing. God's agenda for that day. Have I carried it out? Am I even listening to what it, tell, it, it tells me to do? Because obedience is better than sacrifice. I can't be praying to God all the time and be begging, 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 Lord, uh, give me grace, give me grace. Your mercy is sufficient for me. But then we are not obedient. It is important that we obey God. Full obedience, not delayed, not partial in any form. It is important that we obey God. So 
for me, as much as possible, when I'm about to sleep, I'm like, have I, have I done it? What he asked me to do, have I done? And I'll be so scared. Because at the end of the day, if you go to work and you come back and you, you know, or you look after your children, it's night time, everybody goes to bed, and you have not fulfilled God's instructions. You have not fulfilled God's plan for yourself, for your life that day. It's like a waste of day, you know. You know, so there was a time I just looked into how I've spent the day and I thought to myself, yeah, you look after the children, you do this, it's holiday time, you look after children, and you wake up in the morning, what else? You eat, they bath, they prepare themselves to play, you take them out, they have fun. Is that all? Is there anything that God has asked us to do that we haven't done? Every now and then, my mind is always on it and I'm like, Lord, please. Please just help us, please. When, there are times when he asks me to do something and I'm unable to do it. If you see how scared I am, you'll be wondering whether somebody is coming to get me. Because I'm so fearful for the things of God. Because he is God. He can't choose to destroy us. And if he chooses to set us free, let us not take advantage. I pray tonight that my God will come. Your God, he will come and save you. He will come and deliver you from that pressing situation. And the spirit of obedience, God will grant us, each and every one of us in our family, husband, wife, children, aunties, uncles, brothers, sisters, the spirit of obedience, God will grant us in Jesus' name. We will not do things in our own way. We will not decide to do it the way we like, but we will decide God's way. And God will come through for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of the things we are going through, we are going through, through it as a result of disobedience to Christ, to his requirement for our lives. When I talk about disobedience, it's not about you just, uh, I'm not going to church. No. Or oh, uh, maybe I, 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 yeah, I, I, I've not gone to church today, I've not read my Bible. Yes, that is part of it. However, Rema word, when God gives you, go and bless this family. Go and do this. Go. Are you listening to it when you sleep? Those visions, do you take cognizance or you just sleep and wake up and say, Yeah, hey, children, wake up. It's time to go to school. It's time to go to work. It's time to have fun. No. When I wake up and I wake up in an emergency, God forbid, I wake up in an emergency in Jesus' name. Well, you know, there are times when you just wake up and you wonder, Oh dear, why did I just. When I jump up from my bed sometimes, I'm like, Okay, so what's the purpose now? And I don't get to sit down and think of what my vision was, or my dream, or I don't even get to at least lie down and not stand up from the bed, that day, you won't see me. You won't really see the good part of me. Because I'll just be misbehaving somehow. I'll just be feeling down, you know, until I get a place to sit down and think. And if I don't get a place to sit down and think and remember what God told me, I will just be a bit miserable to myself, obviously, not to anyone. I'll just be miserable because I'll just be like, what's the point? What's the point? And then there are times when I even forget and I just quickly go and do things. And then once I start driving or once I go around, I'll just be thinking, so what was the dream? So what was the vision? Hmm? What did God try to tell me today now that I don't even know? That I can't even remember? That's me. Everybody's different. But I have to remind us that thing, that message. What God asks you to do, please arise and do it. Please, I'm begging you, in the name of Jesus Christ, arise and do it. And I believe as you do that, it is well with you, your family, your generation, your home, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's all we have for tonight. Until next time, stay blessed, be in the presence of God. It won't be long. It's just for a while. It's a testing of faith. God is coming up. It's coming true for you. Don't give up just yet. Be obedient as well. God bless you. Bye.